I'd like now, it gives me uh, enormous pleasure and privilege to introduce to you uh, David Malouf. Uh, David is, uh, as you all know, an internationally acclaimed author of novels, including Ransom, The Great World, which won the Commonwealth Writers' Prize, Remembering Babylon, which was shortlisted for the Booker and won the Impact Dublin Literary Award, and more. His latest book, First Place, was published this year. But now David will read poems from his new collection, Earth Hour. As he interweaves light and dark, levity and gravity, he will offer a vision of life on this patch of earth and its green things, charting the resilience of beauty amid stubborn human grace. David. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple of earlier poems and then go on to the uh, poems in the lat latest book. Uh, that's partly to um, introduce myself in many ways, because these poems are, are semi-autobiographical. I grew up in Brisbane, and these uh, two poems uh, were both written in about 1964, when I was living in England, so that's 50 years ago. Um, the first one is a poem about growing up in Brisbane in the war, and um, it's autobiographical, obviously. Um, I, I just point out one thing. It makes a reference to somebody called Magda Lupescu, um, who once would have been almost as famous as somebody like uh, I can't even think of who the equivalent would be today, but she was the red-headed mistress of King Carol of Romania, and the newspapers always had something to say about her when I was age 10. And the poem's called The Year of the Foxes. When I was 10, my mother, having sold her old fox fur, a ginger-red, bone-jawed, magda lupuscu of a fox, that on her arm played dead, cunningly da dangled a lean and tufted paw, decided there was money to be made from foxes and bought via the columns of the Courier Mail a whole pack of them. They hung from penny hooks in our panelled sitting room, trailed from the backs of chairs. And Brisbane ladies, rather the worse for war, drove up in taxis wearing a GI on their arm and rang at our front door. I slept across the hall at night hearing their thin cry. I dreamed the dangerous spark of their eyes, brushes of flame in our fur-hung nomadic tent in the suburbs, the dark fox stink of them cornered in their holes and turning. Among my mother's showpieces, Noritake teacups, tall hock glasses with stems like barley sugar, gold leaf demitasse, the foxes, row upon row, thin nosed, prick eared, dead. The cry of hounds was lost behind mirror glass, where ladies with silken snoods and fingernails of Chinese lacquer red fastened a limp paw went down in their high heels to the warm, soft bitumen, wearing at throat and elbow the rare spoils of 44, old foxes, rusty red, like dried up wounds, and a GI escort. Uh, the next poem, also written in the same year when I was living in England, I'd uh, passed on to my um, sister, a piece of property that my father had bought in my own name. And um, this poem is called This Day Under My Hand. And it's really about growing up, as I did, um, on the beachside suburbs of uh, Moreton Bay in Brisbane. Well, it was never mine, not really. My father bought it in my name to save the tax in 45. Streaked weatherboard, no view to speak of, only the sand hills of Morton Island, humpbacked and white like whales. My sister will stock its rooms with cedar and brass. Her kids leave sand prints of their sneakers on its floors. Small arms spread 
to conjure again from moonlit shallows the old rock cod they hooked at dawn out on the reef. Sand crubs throw their claws in a copper pot, hiss red, their agonies sealed off under a lid. At nine, the scrabble board, small words interlocking down and across to fill an evening square by square. Storm lanterns, tiger moths at the wire screen door, slow fan of the light at Cowan Cowan. The cold Pacific banging an open gate. Australia hitched like a water tank to the back veranda, all night tugging at our sleep. A world away and nothing to do with me. Sheer water gulls, the sun-grenched crevice where lobsters crawl, sharp salt stinging the flesh like bees, working its slow way into the cracks in iron, laying its white crust on the skin. Now let it go, my foothold on a continent. I sign my name, it blooms elsewhere, as salt, gulls cry, bruised flesh of the reef that gasps and thrashes its life out in our hands. From the dark bay, hissing like crabs, red tropic suns. Um, that is a poem really about um, different kinds of possession. And one of those forms of possession is what poetry is really all about. It's about repossessing the world and the experience you've lived through and bringing it back to life again in some kind of way as words on a page. Um, the poems in the new book are written 50 years after those poems. And um, the first poem I'm going to read goes back, in fact, to that world of um, the sea, this time the Pacific. I, I own a unit these days at the Gold Coast, which is where everybody moved from the bay where I grew up eventually after the war, everybody moved to the coast. And that place that's now called um, uh, the Gold Coast City, which is one of the half dozen largest conurbations in Australia, was in those days just a lot of um, dunes and um, small wooden houses. And I now own, as I say, a unit in one of those great blocks. It's called Aquarius, and this is a poem written uh, about being at that place. One of the things it means, of course, is that um, exactly as when I was writing those poems in England, the larger part of my life in my head was still back in Australia when I was 10 years old. Um, this too is about the fact that you never, um, in terms of what you respond to, most deeply, certainly in where poetry comes from, um, move from the first place that you really grew up. Aquarius. <clears throat> One of those sovereign days that might seem never intended for the dark. The sea's breath deepens from oyster shell to inky, blue upon blue, heaped water, crowded sky. This is the day we tell ourselves that will not end and stroll enchanted through its moods as if we shared its gift and were immortal. Till something in us snaps, a spring, a nerve. There is more to darkness than nightfall. Caught reversed in a mirror's lens, we're struck by the prospect of a counterworld to so much stir, such colour. Loved animal forms, shy otherlings our bodies turn to when we turn towards sleep. Like us, the backward children of a green, original, anti-Eden from which we've never been expelled. Uh, this is a poem uh, I wrote for Chris Wallace Crabb, Melbourne poet, um, for his 80th birthday in the year, I must say, of my own 80th birthday. So it's uh, 
it's a poem really about both of us. And it draws on a, on a wonderful line from Shakespeare's uh, Measure for Measure, spoken by the Duke, who speaks about neither youth nor age, but as it were an after dinner's sleep, dreaming on both. And uh, that's what life is in that play. This poem is called Footloose, a senior moment. And after dinner's sleep, not a bad place to arrive at. The big enticements may be a matter of memory, but isn't memory the dearest and cheapest of luxuries? And of its kind, one of our rarest gifts. The footloose present, not to be going anywhere soon. The being still from toe and fingertip to wherever, at home in our own skin, makes the afternoon as it tempers its flame and the salt sea air its touch to diminuendo. As the man says, dreamlike, as of a body for the first time, as I recall it, unmoored, afloat, the bay all glitters, and my father on the skyline, stepping away out of reach. A new mode of being, oh, completely, neither earthbound, nor even maybe skybound, and as I recall it now, not for the first time either, and so not strangely, but for the second, footloose and far out in the foggy galaxies, in my own blue dream bubble, a star as yet unnamed, as yet unclaimed by gravity. Uh, this is a poem that also goes back, back to that bayside suburb where um, uh, the, the second poem I read was set, which was Scarborough down the bay in Brisbane, um, back only to be able to find a new way forward, actually. It's called Entreaty. After the age of innocence, golden brawlers in the arms of demigods, we arrive at the age of reason, credulous poor monsters led by a dream team in a mad dance down loud streets into quicksand. After that, it's the age of the seven pills daily. Small mercies restore us. Bayside air, salt sweet in our mouths again. We set out for the corner shop and by some happy chance, it is still there. The same old woman keeps it. When the doorbell shakes her from sleep through wisps of gray smoke from her asthma papers, what's it to be? What's your poison this time, love? She wheezes. Is it a riddle? If it is, I'm lost. The ancient grins abides the answer. I clench my fist on the hot penny I've brought. Only now, a lifetime later, find my tongue. If luck is with me today on my long walk home, may no black cat cross my path, no sweet talking stranger, no thief, no mischief maker, no trafficker in last words waylay me. Uh, this is a, another poem about childhood. Um, and I'm sure everybody will recognize the situation, all the situations, perhaps. It's called Lady Bird. Childhood visitors, the surprise of their presence, a kind of grace. Kindest of all, the lady bird. Neither lady, unless like so much else in those days, disguised in a witch's spell, nor bird, but an amber bead-like jewel that pinned itself to our breast. A reward for some good deed we did not know we'd done, or earnest of a good world's 
goodwill towards us. Lady bird, lady bird, fly away home, we sang. Our full hearts lifted by all that was best in us. Pity for what, like us, was small. But why was her house on fire? And sped her on her way with the same breath we used to snuff out birthdays on a cake. The break and flare of her wings, the flame that leapt from the match, snug in its box, snug in our fist under the house, that out of hand went sprinting up stairwells and stamped and roared about us. Lady bird, mother, quick, fly home. The house, our hair, everything close and dear, even the air is burning. In our hands, we had no warning of this. The world is alive and dangerous. Um, this is a poem that um, provides the um, title for the book. It's Earth Hour, and uh, you'll all know what Earth Hour is when we make our little gesture for one hour of turning all the lights off. It's about Earth Hour, but it's also Earth Hour in a slightly different sense. And I just say that in the last line, the, the word Schatzkammer uh, appears. It's German word for uh, treasure house. A word I really, really love and which doesn't, uh, I can find no equivalent for its richness really in, in, in English. It's why it's there in German. Earth Hour. It is on our hands. It is in our mouths at every breath. How not remember. Called back to nights when we were wildlife before kindling or kine. We sit behind moonlit glass in our McMansions, cool millions at rehearsal here for our rendezvous, each with his own earth hour. We are feral at heart, unhouseled creatures. Mind is the maker, mad for light, for enlightenment. This late admission of darkness, the cost, and the silence on our tongue as we count the hour down. The coin we bring, long hoarded just for this. The extended cry of our first coming to this ambulant, airy, schatzkammer and midden. Our green, accommodating tomb. Um, this is a poem that I can uh, dedicate at the moment to Hugh. <laughs> it's called Dog Park. Uh, uh, the dog park, this particular dog park is the, is the park I usually go and walk in when I'm visiting Brisbane, which I go to back, back to every six or seven weeks, uh, with my sister who has two large Labradors and we spend a lot of our time together uh, with the dogs in that dog park. And um, this is my take on the role the dog park plays in our life these days, in our really our human city life. Dog park. Trees of a dozen shades, all of them native, none from the same habitat or region. Though the breezes visit them equally, and the bees. Free access also to civil beasts, the preened and petted, that when they heal and prance, are ghost dancers on the feet of sleeping wolves. The scent trail across country blurs and is lost at a boundary fence. Communication is minimal. The greeting codes, more intimate curious among the creatures who know no shame and are free to follow their noses into places better not named or noticed. We have all come a long way to get here. The memory of meadow shine, a green reminder of what we were, what they were, how we have lived 
and learned from each other, and who it was that emerged as the namers and keepers. Long-sighted stargazers, herders of space into viable chunks, moody diviners of closeness and the degrees of melancholy distance, with all that ensued as entailment, dog tag, poop scoop, dog whistle, the angel gate of exile, beginning with our own. Um, this is another poem about um, that place in the building called Aquarius. It's called Aquarius too. Uh, and it's again about that um, uh, building, which is right on the ocean. It's on the 28th floor. And so when you look out, all you actually see is the Pacific all the way, if you could look that far to Peru. Aquarius too. Oh, I might just also point out that it's a reference to Mozart's K581. And if anyone's curious, that's the, um, the clarinet quintet. One of the almost last works of Mozart. Swimming through space this morning with the light of the Pacific on three walls and a feathery pink in the sky of an, of an angel event. Time that can be the devil on occasions in weather such as this seems bountiful. Pure gift with nothing to pay one breath, then the next, freely delivered, at least for now and here. Elsewhere, the world kindles and quakes. Women bear on their heads a hodful of it from one side to the other of the globe. Children cram their belly with its mud. In a lakeside wood, anemones feel their way out of the dark. And the first four downward notes of K581 take a second breath and swing companionably upward. Sheer miracle or happy accident, one like us of many. With a quiet thank you to the planet, the snow, hoop pines, Mozart, and you, of course, and you, I leave the room to its play sacred perhaps with salt and sun motes. Content, now the little drummer has made his ado and fax and fiddle have had their say to call it a night, call it a day. And this poem, um, which is the last one in the book, is dedicated to an old friend of 50 years. Um, it's set in uh, at a place called Lerici, which I went back to um, a couple of years ago. I took a house for three weeks there so that I could have various friends from Europe come and visit. Uh, it's a place I'd gone back to many times since I first went there in 1959. It's uh, on the Bay of La Spezia, which is where um, Shelley and Byron both lived for a long time. So it's known in Italian as um, the Golfo dei Poeti, the Gulf of the Poets. And it's the biggest port, port in Italy. Uh, but Lerici is a little town on the ed edge of it. And it's about sitting up there on the terrace after dark. At Lerici. Darkly at anchor in the roadstead, ships keep close the secret of their journeys and the islands theirs. History is made up of nights such as this, when little happens. Lovers in their beds whisper and touch, a new player tumbles onto the scene. Crickets strike up a riff on the razzle-dazzle of starlight, then stop. The blissful friction and pointillist throb of night music is older, runs deeper than speech. An electric flicker the planet's first incidence of traffic, then heartbeat, then thought. We sit in the warm dark, watching container ships 
ride on blue-black moonlit glitters. After long journeying, arrived at the high tide of silence after talk. And just finally, I'm going to read a book, a poem from the book just before that, which is called um, Typewriter Music. This is um, a poem that virtually everybody who has any aspirations to be a poet in any European language um, has at one time or another tried to translate. It's a little um, five-line poem that's attributed to the Emperor Hadrian. Um, and uh, I've tried it as other people have for many, many years. Finally decided that the only way to um, deal with its layering of meaning is to make seven different translations of it, which would go through the same words of the Latin, um, but really discover those underlying ways in which it's, it's a moment written, uh, the poem is written at the moment of death by the Emperor Hadrian, uh, and it's really the body saying goodbye to the soul. Uh, so it's, it, it, it's one of those many poems that exist in English and other languages, which is a kind of dialogue between the body and the soul. It's also a kind of love poem. Um, so uh, I've called it the seven last words of the Emperor Hadrian. And I'll just read the Latin and then each of the seven poems. The Latin is full of diminutives, um, which you'll hear uh, in the words. Uh, we, we can't use diminutives without in English without it sounding very, very silly. So you have to find some other way in the poem of dealing with the tone, uh, through the tone, with what the Latin does with its diminutives. This is the Latin. Animula vagula blandula, hospes comosque corporis, quae nunc habibis in loca, pallidula, rigida, Nudula, nekut soles dabis yokos. And these are the seven small translations. Dear soulmate, little guest and companion, what shift will you make now, out there in the cold? If this is a joke, it is old, old. Soul, Small wandering one, my life-long companion, where will you go, numb, pale, undefended? Now the joke we shared is ended. Little lightfoot spirit, housemate, bedfellow, where are you off to now? Cat got your tongue, lost your shirt, caught your death? Well, the last laugh is on you, is on us. Sweet urchin, fly by night, heart's guest, my better half and solace, you've really done it this time. You've played one trick too many. Fool, you've laughed us both out of breath. If this is one of your jokes, my Jack, my Jack in the box, lay off. Where have you got to? It's cold out there. And what will you do without me, you sweet idiot? Go naked, homeless, come back to bed. What's this, old mouse, my secret sharer? Gone where? Do you think I'd let you slip away without me after a lifetime of happy scrapes? Who warmed you, clothed you, fed you, paid with laughter for your tricks, your japes? Is this the one joke Poor Jack and apes, dear bugaboo, your emperor does not get. So you're playing fast and loose after, uh, are you? You've cut the love knot. Well, let's see how you get on out there without me. Who's kidding who? Without my body, its royal breath and blood to warm you, my hands, my tongue to prove to you, What's real, what's not, poor fool, you're nothing. But oh, without you, my sweet nothing, I'm dust. Thank you.